and I'm gonna dive right in because I know that the hour is late and uh, we still have to um, go into communion. So I'm just gonna roughly start here after I uh, read the scripture one more time in your hearing and then we will pray and uh, dive right into it. 1837, John 1837. Pilate therefore said unto him, are you a king then? He's asking him this question. Are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful again for this moment, and we are all open to your word right now, and we're asking that it will find good ground. So, Spirit of God, just come in, speak to our hearts, change us, move us, just let us not leave this place the same. And when it's all said and done, we'll give you the glory. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus is in a Pilate's judgment hall and he is having this exchange with Pilate. And I love it because he's actually trying to give Pilate an opportunity to acknowledge who he is. And so they're having this exchange, and, 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 and Pilate's asking Jesus, who are you? And, and um, Jesus is like, who do you think I am? And, you know, they're kind of going back and forth. And he's like, well, are you a king? And, and, and Jesus is like, well, you're saying that I'm a king. My kingdom isn't of this world. And he begins to say, if my kingdom was of this world, then my servants, they would fight on my behalf. But, but you know, he, so Pilate's like, well, well, am I a Jew? Like, how am I supposed to know who you are? Like, your own nation is bringing you before me. Like, how am I supposed to know who you are? And, 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 and Jesus is, is trying to give him this opportunity to really acknowledge who he is, but he doesn't. It's like he wants to, but he's hesitant. It's like, you know, those moments we, we want to we wanna witness for him, but we don't. We want to live for him, but we don't. Like, Pilate's literally weighing in that balance, and he doesn't know what to do. And so he's like, well, are you a king? And Jesus says to him, you're saying that I'm a king. But I'm going to tell you this. I was born for this reason. This thing really got against to me. And again, I know you guys are tired, y'all warm, it's raining, it's gloomy, but I'm, I'm going to jump up and down in a second. He's like, for this reason, I was born. For this reason, I came into the world. It's amazing because Jesus could have easily been distracted by this idea of being king. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. There was a time where the people actually wanted to take him and make him a king by force. There, now he's in Pilate's judgment hall and Pilate's asking him, are you a king? But Jesus wanted absolutely nothing to do that. And though he was fully king and fully God, that wasn't the, for, the foremost thought in his mind was not his reputation or, or his status or who he was. He was so driven by his purpose. He knew he was like, I was born for this reason, not to be be known as king here on earth, not to make a lot of money, not to have the best paying job. I was born for this reason. I came into the world for this reason and this reason alone. Amen. 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 
far gone a person has to be. That here, this heathen governor comes before you and tells you that I have found absolutely no fault in a person. Amen. 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 But you're so far gone uh -huh. that you just can't even acknowledge what the man just said. Yes. That you immediately begin to order the death of an innocent man. Amen. You guys missed it. Their mentality was just so wicked and so off and they were just so far gone. That a person is coming to you telling you he's innocent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found no fault in him. He's done absolutely nothing yeah. wrong. He, I, I just can't find it. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That you keep pressing and, and pressing that mm -hmm. you want his death so badly. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what time? And these are the people Jesus comes to save his own people, and he's hearing them yell out, crucify him. He has just been betrayed, betrayed by one of the, his loved ones, Peter, had just denied him uh, three times, and, and he's standing there about to face death. Are you guys with me? Amen. Amen. And all he knows is that this is the very reason he has come into the world. And I love it because as the story goes on, uh, the, the Bible says that, that now the, the cross is bare. You know, like he, Pilate is trying to, to offer them Barabbas. He's trying to get Jesus out of it. The people aren't hearing it. They aren't having it. So they begin to, 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 to get Jesus ready for his crucifixion. So they place, place the cross on him. And the Bible says that he, he bears his cross. It's so crazy because he's he's literally physically buried a cross, but that wooden cross was not ultimately the cross that he had to bear. The cross that he was bearing was our sin and our shame and our guilt and our wretchedness and our weakness and, and our frailty and our humanness and our flesh. And he's buried, he's he's born and came into the world to bear this thing, and he knows it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I have to tell you guys that 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 Jesus, he he went through a lot of stuff. Yes, Amen. Like when he came, when he came uh, into the world, you know, we always hear it. He didn't have a place to lay his head at times. He was homeless at times. And, you know, he was he was just uh, you know he he really lived off the goodness of others. And 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 you know, like in, in our lives, if we went through things like that, we would feel like we just uh, you know we would be so down and out, right? Like. Uh, Homeless, not having a place, relying upon other people, not really understanding why all this is happening to us. But see, Jesus was so focused on why he was here. And I'm telling you guys that the cross that he was bearing was the cross that, that of our shame and, and, and of our guilt. And at the end of the day, we also have to bear a cross. Yes. Okay? But when we think about that, when we think about that, we believe that our cross are usually our trials and our hardships and See, our trials, our cross, we think, is when we don't have enough finances. See, we believe that our, our cross and our trials are, 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 are when, you know, we don't have, when, when, when cancer has come on the scene or, or whatever the case may be. And the Lord showed me something as, Je as I'm watching Jesus bear this cross, as I'm reading it, but I can see it in my mind. I'm like, he's bearing this cross and not just physically bearing a cross, though he is physically bearing a cross, but he's bearing the cross of our sin and our shame. And, and he knew that his purpose was beyond the fact that he didn't have a, a place to lay his head. His purpose was beyond this trial or, or that trial. Ultimately, he was sent here to do something so much bigger for salvation, for, for our lives, to, to give us a chance. And, and, and God has placed each and every one of us here for such a bigger picture that at the end of the day, your cross is not your trial and your hardship. We live in a sinful world. You're just going to have trials and hardship no matter who you are. The cross that we are supposed to carry day in and day out is for the, for the, for the betterment of the kingdom of God. Amen. It's for the betterment of the kingdom of God. Once again, he showed me that what we go through is periphery. Yes. It's not the main thing. Though we are always so focused on our problems and what's happening in the here and now, he's like the bigger picture is the cross that you are supposed to carry is what you are doing for my kingdom. The very reason you were born, the reason why you came into this world was to bear a cross for me. Amen. 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 
Amen. So Jesus says, I mean, so Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Yes, right. See, we have to understand that there is no Christianity without a cross. Right. But see, we want these lives of ease and we want our life, but, but, but that's not what it's about. And again, your cross isn't just the hardship that you face in life. You have to carry a cross like Jesus carried a cross. Mm -hmm. And for each of us, it may look different because why you were put, put here was different for why I was put here. Nevertheless, we are to carry this cross for the kingdom's sake. We are to crucify ourselves. We are to live to die every single day. There is no Christianity without a cross. There is no Christianity without death. Amen. Oh, right. See, we 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 come to church week after week, and 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 really, that's it. Mm. All right. Our Christianity doesn't extend any farther than what you know us walking through these doors. Yeah. All right. And we love to bear the name of, of Jesus and of being a Christian, and, and we've never really shouldered that thing up. And sure, we go through. It's hard. I mean, we live in this. I mean, look at it outside. That's what kind of world we live in. Yeah, it gets, it gets hard sometimes, but, but it's not about that. See, Jesus says, I have, I, you, I, he says, like, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have, I've overcome the world. Yeah, amen. Right. Yeah. See, he's letting you know that you're going to have trials and tribulations just because. That's what, that's what kind of world we live in. Amen. But he's overcoming, and he's not just overcoming in the sense that, 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 that man, uh, you know, I've overcome it so you can have a better financial uh, <laughs> Man. Yes. Right. He's like, I have conquered this thing because you. The, the reason why you have tribulation is because it's a sinful world, and you have to know that I've overcome sin, and I, you have to know that I have overcome sin. So be in of good cheer when you go through. When cancer comes on the scene, when you can't pay your bills, when somebody dies, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All of that is as a result of some, some simple stuff. But right now, as he's standing in Pilate's judgment hall, about to face death, he has he is about to overcome sin. Amen. 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 And we we are supposed to live as people who are victorious over this thing. Now, I really what I'm, I'm only going to take a few more minutes. I mean, like because I feel like I'm everywhere because I'm trying to wrestle to get here. But <laughs> I was thinking about this, and this it's it's difficult. Sin is such a taboo thing, like outside of churches. It really is. It's like, you know, you, you don't step on anybody to, anybody's toes these days. I mean, it can be labeled as discrimination. It can be labeled as so much stuff. You know, so you you kind of careful where you where you tread. Amen. And it's hard because we're faced with it every day. I mean, you watch Scandal. Mm -hmm. Don't act like you don't. <laughs> I, I don't because I'm more righteous than you guys. <laughs> I'm sure it's each other. That's not funny. <laughs> and we're faced with it every single day. So, like, we're watching this stuff. Like, we're watching it, right? We're watching it. We're watching, like, people commit adultery, watching, like, you know, different stuff like, like that. And it, it really just it becomes entertaining, you know? And so, like, at, at some point, like, seeing, like, it really kind of does lose its little sting, you know, after a little bit. And I, I'm not trying to be that person. I'm not that person. You know, like, I'm not that person that's just, like, everything sin and da-da-da-da-da. Like, I'm not that person. But, but it does. It loses a little, a little bit of its, 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 its sting. And I'm telling you, like, if sin loses it sting in our minds and the way we look at it, the way we view it, then, then the cross of Christ has absolutely no power in our lives. And, and if it has no power in our lives, then, then we are just, we, we are, what are we here for? Amen. All right. All right. What does it mean? Do you, we have to understand that everything in this book points to this one event. Amen. I don't care if you're reading 
from Genesis or Revelation in all points to this one event where Christ takes on our sin and, and that's how 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 just much God despises sin. Yeah. How pouring it is to him that he would allow his son to rest under his judgment so for 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 us. And if sin loses its sting, if we don't really view it the way God views it. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then this one event that God was literally doing everything. God did everything in Jesus Christ. I'm like spitting up here. Like God was literally doing everything in Jesus. But in this one thing, like this, his whole plan. His whole purpose was poured out in this thing as, as Jesus is standing there in Pilate's hall about to face death. Yes, that's right. Amen. Yes. Everything God was doing culminated right here. It's right here. It's coming right here. And like if, if we don't understand, if we don't understand why, why that needed to happen? Mm -hmm. Then God has done nothing. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. See, and when it talks about, you know, when the Bible talks about confessing our sins, mm -hmm. when, he, when he talks about confessing our sins, that word literally means to come in agreement with God mm -hmm. about how bad sin is. Yes. 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 So you're not confessing to him to make known to him what he already knows. Right, right. You're confessing to come in agreement with God. Yes, that yes, yes, what I am doing, who I am, mm -hmm. is horrible. Yes. I agree with you, God. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm agreeing with you. Yes, yes. And then everything that God did in Jesus begins to take on a whole new meaning in your life. This, this, he says we do this, in, I mean, remembering his death until he comes. Yes, right. amen. Everything God did in Christ in this woman, when you can come in agreement with how simple, simple sin really is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about a Christian with power. He says, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. So Paul, he starts making lists. Yeah, I went through this. I mean, I've been shipwrecked. I've been stoned. I've been, I've been in prison. I've been bitten by snakes. I mean, the whole night. Yes, yes. And I would do it all gladly. He says, what, 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 you, what you think I've lost, I can't get. Amen. I mean, that, that's a Christian with power. With every little bad thing that no, he 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 understands one fundamental thing that that in this world I'm gonna go through, but I can be of good cheer. You know why? Because Christ died so that I could live. He died so that we could live. He overcame the world. He overcame sin. He overcame that that wicked wickedness that just allows your boss to treat you a certain way. He overcame that. Yes. That's right. Yes. He overcame that, that, that. He overcame death. Somebody said the day the death died. Isn't that great? Like when he died on the cross, it was the day the death died. All right. All right. All right. I mean, all that stuff has absolutely no more power when you begin to look at it in the context of the cross. Mm. Mm. Amen. So we have to stop walking around here like people who are just powerless. And, and, and you know, we're told that like when we study the cross, we should study it every day, by the way. That's what we're, we're told. We should, we should read it and study it every day. Because, again, God did everything in that, in that moment. His whole plan was that. And so we tell we should study it every day and that it should move us. Something, something should happen on the inside of us. Like when you read it, if you are without emotion, it's something, something's wrong. Something's wrong if you can read about Jesus dying for you and, and it, you're not moved to, to tears or, or something. Maybe you're not a crier, but it should do something. He says, he's, she says something, something is 
is, is gravely wrong. And so we have to stop being these people who just like absolutely walk around here with no power, with toss, when when every little bad thing happens. And I don't want to belittle it because like thing is it does get hard sometimes. Yes. Amen. 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 But you are not without power. And then that man, not only did he die. Yes. Yeah. Not only did he die. And he lived that life, that great life, that perfect life. And then he died. He took on all of our sin. And then he was like, I mean at the end of the day, that's not enough. I gotta be a first fruit. I gotta rise from from the ground. To let them know that at the end of the day they they will too. Amen. So it doesn't matter. You can you can you can die. You can what you know right here on earth. But one day I am going to come again. Like because I rose, I rose so that I can come again. And, and I, I'm preparing this place for you now. And I, then I'm going to come again. And I'm going to receive you to uh, to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I mean, we got to begin to live this thing like it really happened. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not a figment of our imaginations. It's not something that just is written in a little old book like this stuff actually happened and we should walk with power. We should walk in this thing like, like Christ lives and because he lives I can face tomorrow. Because he lives I, I mean all, all my fear is gone. Amen. 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 And so we're gonna, we are going to go into our, our ordinance of, 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 of uh, I mean, our sacrament, take, uh, partaking of our sacraments here. But, um, you know, I just want to encourage us that as we're going from day to day, first of all, I want to encourage us to study this thing, you know. If you can't do it every day, do it, you know, once a week, but just where you are just reading about the cross of Christ. Amen. And him just, and what was done on your behalf. And then just know also that you weren't placed here just to have a good job. Amen. I, let me just bust some of your bubble. You weren't even here just to get married. Amen. That's right. Who are here to, to get that degree? Like at the end of the day, and those those things are very important and very needful. You know, that God wants you to do those things. That is not ultimately why you were placed here. And we have to be assured of the cross that we are to carry as Christ was. He says he is the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. That because I ran this race, you will have to run it too. That's what he says in Hebrew. And so we have to we have to know as sure as he was why we are put here, why we were put here on this earth. It was not just to make a lot of money or to do whatever. There is a purpose and a plan. You have a cross to carry. Yes. You have a cross to carry. Amen. There is no Christianity without a cross. Amen. Remember that. Right. And then you have to know that, that man, he's overcome. Amen. He's overcome sin. Yes. He's yes. overcome the world. Yes. We are victorious Hallelujah. in him. Yes. I mean, we struggling. If you're struggling with something, you know, um, <laughs> and the, this is kind of, you know, it's, there is a difference between sin and sins. Mm -hmm. You know, he overcame sin. Yes. So that he can allow us to overcome our sins. Yes. You guys follow me? Yes. Okay. yes. So and it goes into this whole theological thing. But I'll just say that sometimes we are so concerned, like let's just say you're a smoker. I don't know, you know. We're so concerned with the behavior because that's all we can see. That's how we judge things. But God, at the end of the day, he's trying to do something so much bigger in you. Amen. It's not just about putting down that. He is trying to, to get that, that spirit of sin. And then he'll deal with the sins. Are you following me? Well, I don't know why I'm spitting up here. Y'all might not want to be like, you <laughs> something to drink. <laughs> so, so, and so we know that we can be victorious when we are in him, when we are crucified with him. Yes. Yes. When he begins to live in us, we, we uh, become victorious. And so we are about to celebrate exactly what he did for us yesterday. Right. And on Good Friday, yes. what he 
what he did for us and and ultimately when we finish taking it we will we will we will be able to walk in the power of his resurrection mm -hmm. and so um i'm just going to invite our elder up have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb before the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when, he, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the small with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he hath numbered with the transgressors, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask that you would just touch this bread and touch this grape juice. And Lord, it's not about what it physically is, but we ask that you would bless it for a spiritual purpose. Bless us and keep us. And Lord, most of all, let us remember you as we do this and what you did for us. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen.
anybody out there who's been overlooked. This was our, his body, and um, it was broken and bruised for us. And so we're going to partake of the body now, and um, we're going to remember his death until he comes. Isaiah 53, um, I was thinking about that text, Isaiah 53, 5, that says, by his stripes we are healed. Yes. And um, I was telling you guys how we should go home and read about the cross, and uh, literally every time that you read where he spit upon or, or beaten or healed, mm -hmm. I mean, or, or, or whatever, mocked, you can literally say, I'm healed. I'm healed. As you're reading, I'm healed. He spit upon, I'm healed. He was, he was beaten with a whip. I'm healed. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. By his stripes we are healed. So we're going to partake of the blood that was shed for us. And we're claiming the victory as we, as we drink. Let's partake together. You don't even have to stand. Just grab somebody's hand next to you. We'll sing.
evicted from uh, right where we are. And um, we do have some food back there. We're having, we just realized we're having a little bit of trouble with our, uh, our gas. So we're, um, we're praying over that stove. Um, <laughs> but we do have salad and bread and cakes, it looks like. Um, so, um, and then after that, we are going to just have a movie time. We're watching War Room here at the church. Everybody's welcome. Anybody's welcome if you want to um, to stay. Um, uh, just leave your um, your cup somewhere where we can uh, pick them up and dispose of them, please. Let's pray. God, we're so grateful for this time that we have been able just to just spend with you. It's been awesome. So we're just thankful. And uh, and Lord, now I just want to pray personally over every life that is here, over every family represented here, that as they walk out of these doors today, that they are walking in newness of life, that right now they are crucifying themselves, which is really our, our, our greatest act of worship. And Lord, as we all crucify ourselves, we're asking that you will live in us. Live in us, God, and help us to be victorious as you are over this world. We love you so much, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you're dismissed. Why don't you hug about four people? Tell them that they're more.